All right. Um, can you all hear me? Yes, yes sir. For on the record in two, uh, file 2016 54450, Kristen Williams and Jacob Hughes. Ma'am, your name? Uh, Kelly Ratton. All right. Where's I'm Kristen's Kristen? mom. You know if she was planning to appear for the hearing? Uh, as far as I know, she was. Uh, she's not in the Zoom meeting here, and I've not received notice that she's checked in in the courthouse. I'll go check the hallway. No, there's nobody out there. Oh, um, would you like me to try to call her? Uh, yes. Yeah, I will try to give her a call real quick. You know, she works third shift, so she may have slept. Sorry, I cannot get a hold of her. I don't know why. Well, we'll proceed. Uh, I'm at a supper at one o'clock. It's quarter after. Uh, Absolutely. Notice went out by the court. Um, Gould, let's address that show cause first. What led the what led to the show cause being filed? The show cause was filed, I believe, November third um, of last year by my client. Um, mother had primary physical custody of Emma. She actually did have Emma living with her in September of 2022. Emma had actually lived with father from January till June of 2022, but she was back living with mother in the summer and the early fall. Mother then reached out to father and said she could not take care of Emma anymore. And instead of letting father uh, have her again, as she had done earlier in the year, she said she was sending Emma to live with Miss Ratton, who's here on Zoom, uh, in Florida. And uh, father was given no, uh, I guess, say in the matter. She said that that's where she's going. I think she ended up down in, flat, uh, in Florida around October 2nd of 2022. And when father um, understood that that was going to uh, be a permanent change and not just a visit, that's when he filed the show cause because uh, her residence had been moved out of the state without the court's order. All right, and uh, what what order is that? That's not in any of the orders. With uh, legal custody, I don't even know that uh, that determination is necessary, is it? The, I mean, Michigan Court Rule three point two one one. I mean, we you an order has to state that the child cannot move its residence outside of the state without the judge's permission. Yeah, I know. It's been interpreted in case law, though, to exclude uh, cases with sole legal custody. All right. Well, I'll keep that in mind that that was the basis for the show cause. Um, Ms. Uh, Williams is here now. Sorry, I was sleeping. I worked all night. Yeah. And uh, so, Mr. Gould, your clients requested a change of custody at this time. Is that correct? That is correct. I mean, right. separate from the show cause reason, um, father did have... Um, Emma living with him exclusively from January of, of 2022 through the end of the school year. And then again with mother stating that she was unable to uh, care for Emma beginning in the fall um, and transferred Emma down to Florida. We would much rather have Emma living with her father than with her. All right. And Ms. Williams, uh, what's your response to that, uh, that request? Um, no, because he doesn't, he only be, he literally is only a dad when he wants to be. Um, when she was there last, she came home and told me that she was touched by her cousin while being with her dad. Your Honor, we're going to object to any kind of hearsay that is brought up. Okay, just tell me what you know, ma'am. That he doesn't give her medication. I have, I have physical proof of that. What medication does she require? She takes a pill every night. She has inhalers. She has a nose it's her, spray. It's for her asthma and allergies, sir. Right, Ms. Ratton, I need you to be quiet at this point. I'm hearing from Ms. Williams. Okay, sorry. She's the party to the case. I'll let you stay on here because the child's with you, but you can't speak unless uh, somebody calls you as a witness, okay? Absolutely. All right, Ms. Williams, go ahead. She has all this medication for her asthma that he doesn't give to her. Um, she's come back from his house filthy. All right, is the and then when she then oh. when she did come back with me, he disappeared for three months at a time again. But the child's not living with you, right? And not at this moment. No, she went with my mother because she wanted. 
I actually, I wanted her to get an education where she, she, she'd get a good education. And now he's fighting three months, four months later. Now he's going to fight about it. But you got to understand the law doesn't uh, allow you to send the child with a third party without, you know, over the other party's objection. He didn't object. He did, Jerry. Well, he filed his motion. Filed the motion. He didn't to... object till just now. She's been there since October of 2022. <laughs> okay, well, the motion was filed at the beginning of December, so. Uh, and the show cause was filed early November. And the show cause was filed before that, so he did object to it. And there, there it's are because certain... he has a problem. It's because he has a problem with my mother and that is exactly why he doesn't want her down there. And she's perfectly happy down there in Florida. Okay, but you got to understand. You, there are two parents. You don't get to make all the choices. He hasn't been a parent. He has not been a parent at all. It sounds like the child was living with him from January to June of this of last year. No, she was not. Well, no, where did she live? She came back to me in like April. We were in court. We we went to court in front of you. I don't even remember when it was, but we went in court in front of you before about that situation because he got mad because I told her she needed to come home. Uh, that was in 2018. That's the last time she's lived with him. 2018? Yeah. Four years ago? When he was trying to get me for child support because she was at his house. Why doesn't the child live with you? You're the custodian. You're the custodial parent on paper. Because I was going through a hard time. I have medical issues myself, so I was going through a hard time. So I let her go with my mother where she was going to be taken care of properly. All right, but you got to understand, you don't get to make that determination on your own. How not? I have full physical and legal custody of her. That doesn't, that doesn't mean he doesn't have any rights. It means you get to make decisions regarding medical care and education and things like that, but you don't get to uh, determine that she can live with a third party over the other parent. Without a he's not her. He's not being her parent, though. He hasn't been her parent for a long time. Like I don't know what you guys don't understand about that. Further, so my my you client. Don't need to yell and scream. It kind of sounds like you're going off the rails here. I mean, uh, I'm not yelling the... and screaming. I just want you all to see that he doesn't care. All right, Mr. Gold, I'm going to swear your client, and you can ask him some questions. Uh, your Honor, before before my client testifies, um, I would like to call Samantha Arandato. That would be my client's girlfriend. Where's she at? She's here in my room. Here. All right, All right ma'am, would you please state your full name, please? Samantha Nicole Arandato. You are um, currently dating Jacob Hughes, is that correct? Yes. And when did you begin your romantic relationship with him? Uh, around Easter of last year. Easter of last year. So April, March, April of last year. Okay. And um, when you first started dating Jacob, uh, were you familiar with his daughter, Emma Lou? Yes. And where was Emma Lou living at the time that you started dating? Uh, at her grandma's house, where he was residing to, which is Jacob's mother's house. So... Am I right in saying that she was living with Jacob and Jacob was living with his mother? Correct. And do you uh, know how long Emma had been staying with Jacob at that time when you started dating him? Um, I knew that Emma was there since December, the year since the year before. <laughs> and how do you know that? Um, just by his mom telling me, his dad telling me, and Jacob telling me. Was Emma enrolled in school when you first came on the scene? Yes. And how do you know she was enrolled there? I physically saw her. So you, your testimony is that you saw Emma at the school? Yes. Do you know where she was enrolled in school when she was living with mother? Um, no. We found out. No, why I, does I it matter said, when she was enrolled before. when she was with me? Ma'am, be quiet. Can I, can I say that? No, you can't. You can... Uh, you can lodge an objection 
if you feel that there is a, uh, a legal objection to a question or an answer, but well, I, need they have, they I need you to be quiet for now. I'll give you a chance to cross-examine the witness and a chance to testify. So, but the only thing you can say now is if you have a legal objection to a question or answer. Well, I object to the hearsay because she said that she heard it from Jacob and his mom and okay. that's well, that hearsay, part, right? That part was hearsay. The part where she saw the child at school is certainly not hearsay. So, Mr. Gold, continue. Thank you. For the record, Your Honor, I would argue that the um, information that she heard from Jacob himself is also not hearsay because he is a party. Um, moving on. Jacob, yes, from his mother, it would be hearsay. Correct. Were you uh, told by Jacob at any point um, that Emma had attended a different school before you entered Emma's life? No. Okay. I, I don't. All right. That's fine. Know. So um, you are now uh, living with Jacob. Is that correct? Yes. And at any time, did Emma live with you? Um, she was at my house, um, which is where we, he, Jacob lives with me at my house. Um, yes, Emma has been to my house. She has her own room. Where, uh, when was she at your house? After Jacob and I have became together, um, on the weekends when we would have her, during the time that we would have her. Um, so we got together Easter. So anytime there between the end of the school year, if we had her, which was Almost every weekend. So, except for Mother's Day weekend, she was with Kristen. So, I'm a little confused. Then. So, when did Jacob move into your home? Was it after the, the school year? The end of April. So, when he moved in, was Emma living with him at the time? Yes. So, Emma actually lived in your house. I didn't hear, I didn't hear her answer that question. Yes. Okay. Yes, Emma was moved in with us. Okay. So, when when Jacob moved into your home, he brought Emma with him, and she moved in with you. With, okay. So when was no, it? Okay. When was it that uh, Emma <laughs> left Jacob's care and went back to mother's? After the school year, so June eighth, uh, when the school year ended. You can speak up just a little bit. When the school the year ended. Okay, um, and that's the twenty one twenty two school year. Right. That ended. Approximately when? Uh, I do believe it was like June seventh, possibly the ninth. So, so Emma had been living um, with Jacob from the moment that you started dating him around Easter, and then she did not return home to live with mother exclusively until after the school testimony. Yes. Okay. Um, you'd also mentioned that um, uh, Emma was with mother on Mother's Day. And is that correct? Yes. Was she, uh, did mother have any other kind of visits with Emma during the time that uh, Jacob had Emma? That was the only time that I remember. No, that wasn't. Okay. Yeah. And so what led to Emma returning to mother's care in June? She said that school was done and she wanted to have her. So she asked, so we brought her up there and gave her to Kristen. And when you say brought her up there, we, where we drove to where where Kristen resides now with her girlfriend at Abby house. I do believe that's the road. Okay. So you took you physically took Emma to mother's home mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah. And then did father have any parenting time that you're aware of um after that during the summer? Yes, we were we would see Emma on Thursdays. We would pick up Emma from um, Kristen's mom, Kelly, at the in Sand Lake um, for the baseball fields, and then we would have her for a few hours, um, and then we would drop her back off until we we were like that until July, the week of July twenty second. We went up to the UP as a family on a family trip. And when you say as a family, did that include Emma? That was including Emma and also my two. You have two children yourself? Yes, I have two. You have uh, physical or legal custody of them? I have 100% custody of both physical and legal. Okay. And um, were there any safety concerns for Emma on uh, while she was in Jacob's care with you? Any dangerous things happen? Any medical concerns? Not during, not for um, Jacob, no, because we were giving her 
the asthma, the medication, the pills. And we always made sure that we had that and gave that back to Kristen or Kelly. Um, the only other, the only concern that I saw was Kristen's phone call. And it was randomly at 1 a.m. in the morning. And when was this phone call? This was before we left in July. So early July-ish. She called and she said that she was unable to deal with the situation at her home and she could not deal with Emma any longer. She told us to come and get Emma because she was going to take some bills. I object that hearsay. Thank you, because that's not true. You hear her? Not hearsay. You're a party to the case, ma'am. She can testify about what you told her. I'll let you testify to it, too, if you want to clarify or... or say that uh, the conversation was was otherwise, but uh, it's not hearsay. So I'll overrule the objection. Thank you, Your Honor. So when you said she was going to take some pills, is that what you said? Yes. And who was she? Kristen. Kristen was going to take some pills. What did you interpret that to mean? My mind went straight to get up and Jacob had, it was one o'clock in the morning. So he just answered it, put it on speakerphone and she was in tears. I said, go tell her we're coming now. That was my reaction. Okay. And as you, what, what did you interpret? I'm going to take some pills to me. What did, what did you think that meant? That could have been drugs. It could have been sleeping pills. It could have been anything. Was this, did you interpret this to be a suicidal attempt or yes. at least a threat of suicide? Yes. So did you or Jacob go up and get Emma? We both did. Okay. And this was before the trip to the UP, correct? Yeah. At what point did Emma return home to mother's house then? Because obviously she didn't commit suicide. Correct. We returned her. Was, before the school year? Yes. Yeah, we returned her on our way home, which was the 25th of July. Okay. Yeah, so when we were coming back um, from our trip, Kristen did, said, hey, I, can you guys drop her off? I want her home now. Did you specifically have any safety concerns for Emma at that point? I had concerns of whereabouts of mentally how Kristen was doing still like, and it wasn't my business to ask, but I mean, like, yeah, I did have concerns like, okay, what type of mindset is Kristen in? Does she need us to take care of her a little bit longer or do, is there any way I can help? After that trip to the UP and after Emma was returned to mother, was Emma uh, seeing Jacob? Uh, or coming to your house for his uh, alternating weekend parenting time? No. At that point in time, she was like, you guys can see her whenever I tell um, Sadie. Go. And the last time we physically saw her from that was for, we asked to have her um, for the first weekend of October for Cedar Springs Red Flannel Festival. And that's when we went to Emma's birthday party at Kelly's house. And we got notified. Kelly was living in Michigan. Correct. At that time. She was not living in Florida. Or her she was when you said you went to Kelly's house, you did not go to Florida. No. So what date was that again? Uh the first weekend in October. That that's the last time that you saw Emma? Is that what you're saying? Yes. That's so, okay. The last so time. you never saw her again after that. Correct. Were you present when Jacob found out? that Emma was going to Florida. Yes. Did you, you were a part of that phone call? That was not a phone call. Oh, what was that? That was at um, Kelly's house for the birthday party and Kristen was there. And Kristen said, yeah, tell your mom where you're going. Tell your dad where you're going. And that's how we found out that Emma and Kelly were going to Florida. That's who, who told you that? Kristen. And they made Emma tell us. Okay. No, Emma didn't tell you. And then, so Kristen said those things. And um, did Jacob say anything? No, and nor did I. So why didn't you say anything? I was just speechless on the fact that things were just not discussed. <laughs> okay. Did Kristen give a reason as to why? Emma was moving to Florida? She did say that she feels that 
right now she would be the best interest for Emma that to have her be with Kelly and um we were just like speechless to that did she just shocked did she explain anything about her housing or her employment or her mental status or anything like that she said that uh things at the home were still not as okay as what they wanted to be and that she didn't have a job but she was wanted to attempt to find a job okay. and this was all um the first weekend of october had emma been enrolled um in school up until that point do you know i would have assumed that she was enrolled in cedars but when jacob got the phone call asking where emma was at that's when i realized um where is Emma going to school at you on the Cedar Springs campus. Did you see Emma at school in Cedar Springs? No, and, but mom wasn't living in the Cedar. Correct. No. So were you a uh, part of that phone call when you called Jacob and asked where Emma was? I was not part of it, but I was standing right next to Jacob when he got two of the phone calls from the schools. Okay. Have you heard anything from mother since uh emma went down to florida has she contacted you and or jacob about um like emma's coming back in january or emma's coming back at the end of the school year or any sort of plans that mom has had for emma uh no we have not had any contact at kelly's house she said that she was going to be going to school um for the school year um down in florida she would be with kelly um, as Jacob, have you seen Jacob, uh, able to FaceTime or call Emma while she's been down in Florida? Yes. And how often do you see him do that? Um, he typically will try to do it once or twice throughout the week. Um, he does work second shift. So most of the times that, uh, we do get to speak to Emma are on the weekend. Okay. And um has grandmother who currently has emma has she ever denied a request to facetime no nope she's been super um great about like hey i'm at work or hey i'm on my way home from work um i gotta pick up emma from daycare or or she's not here right now i she'll be there in an hour she's been cooperative in everything okay um and you're on those phone calls too when when Jacob gets to see Emma. Yeah. And do you have any concern about Emma's immediate safety down in Florida at this point? Um, no. All right. Is there anything else you'd like the court to be aware of that I haven't already asked? I have no further questions, Connor. Right. So Ms. Williams, if you have any questions, you can ask uh Ms. Quest uh Ms. Aaron down to any questions you might have at this time. I don't have any questions for anybody. All right, thank you. Um, thank you, ma'am. Mr. Gold. All right. My next uh, witness is Jacob Hughes, Your Honor. Sir, you are Jacob uh, Anthony Hughes, correct? Yes. And you are the legal father of Emma Lou Hughes? Yes. And there is a current court order that awards you supervised parenting time of Emma Lou every other weekend. Is that your understanding? That's the current court order? Yes. Uh, have you and Miss Williams been uh strictly abiding by that order or have you taken other parenting time with emma i've taken other parenting times with emma okay let's just talk about 2022 for a moment i know that samantha had just testified that uh emma was living with you was that correct yes when did emma come to live with you end of december uh First of January. That's January 2020, about a year ago. Uh yeah. Okay. And how did she come about to to live with you? What was the conversation between you and Miss Williams? I don't remember what the conversation was exactly about, but it was just in the best interest for Emma to go to school because she'd be at school every day. Was there concern that she wouldn't be at school every day where she was previously attending school? Yes. What was that concern? Why wasn't she attending school? 
she didn't have a way to get Emma to school and back home from school. And you were okay with this, with Emma coming to live with you? Yes. Did Kristen um, give you all of the medications that Emma was supposed to be taking? Yes. And then did you distribute those accordingly? I gave her her pills every day. And even on the bottle, one, one of them said, taken as needed. And I called her doctor to make sure that's how it was supposed to be. And her doctor said, yes, it's not an everyday inhaler. And so I wasn't giving her that one every day. It was just as needed. Okay. And um, so Emma's living with you. You live in the school district yes and so you enrolled her yes what was her attendance like while she was in it was at school every day unless she was sick um and you are employed yes where are you employed at okay and what is your job there i'm a custodian i work nights that's how you met miss arandano yep you work nights so were you able to see emma at school at all yes i during like the parent teacher conferences, uh, her teacher has told me that, you know, she was, you know, not being nice to other students, you know, mocking the teacher. And she thought it would be better if I could stop in there towards the end of the day and see her and see if that changes. And it did. With me stopping in there and seeing Emma at school towards the end of the day, her attitude changed a lot. Um, Ms. Williams had stated earlier in this hearing that she had, you guys had been in front of the court um, in April of 2022 to discuss this sort of thing. Um, is, was that true to your knowledge? You No. Not had any kind of court dealings, no. Nope. Whether in front of the referee. Or the <laughs> the, is it true that Emma was living with you throughout the entirety of the uh, January or the second half of the school year for 2022? Yes. All right. So then school lets out in end of May, early June. Was Emma still living with you then? Yes. And at some point, Emma went to go live with Miss Williams again. Correct? Yes. Can you tell me about how that transaction, how did that occur? It was the end of the school year and Kristen wanted her back. So we made the arrangements for me to take her back to Kristen. And at that point, I, dropped, I brought her to her friend Abby's house, which is up in Big Rapids, Paris area, and dropped her off. It's an hour drive. You say you dropped her off at uh, Miss Williams' friend's house. Yes. Why didn't you drop her off at Miss Williams' house? Because Miss Williams doesn't have a house. Did Emma have uh, any time with Miss Williams on Mother's Day? Yes. And where did you drop Emma off at that time? I don't remember if I took her to Miss Williams or if she met me somewhere. Other than Mother's Day, was there any other? parenting time or visits with mom during the school year that you during, had? So during the school years, Kristen would come and get her, you know, sometimes on the weekends, not every weekend. It was pretty much like every other weekend she came and got her. Did uh, Miss Williams um, ever make any statements that uh, Emma Lou was unsafe or she didn't like how Emma was being treated in your care or anything like that? She always accused me of not take care of my kid, but I always took care of my kid. My kid was with me all the time unless I was at work. Did she demand that Emma come and return to live with her? That was after the, after the school year. But not during the school year? No. Okay. Um, so then summer is going on. Uh, you, were you, uh, Emma was living with Miss Williams during the summer of 2022. And were you exercising any parenting time during that? Uh, up until our vacation, I seen her. Okay. So uh, that vacation was the end of July, correct? Yes. And so after that vacation, were you exercising any parenting time? No, because Kristen got mad because I told her I had some concerns about where she was living with my daughter. 
and she told me she didn't care. I had to take her back there right now or she's calling the cops on me. What were your concerns about where Emma was or, or where Miss Williams was living with Emma? It didn't look like a safe place to live. Like, Why not? Was Were there animals? Was there? Uh, there was animals. You know, the one dog, like every time I showed up there, that dog was chained up outside and didn't look very nice. But you didn't file a motion. No. At that point, we didn't have any. No, I, was, to say I was seeing her and then, you know, she like, oh, you can see her under my conditions now. And so. Did you ever try to in, uh, invoke the court order? Again, we talked about this. You're supposed to see her every other weekend. Right. Um, and mom was denying you that. Is that what you're saying? Yes. So then when did you learn that uh, Emma was going to Florida? Uh, the birthday party at Kelly's house. In Michigan again. And uh, you heard uh, Samantha's testimony regarding that. Yep. Was that um, accurate? Is that how it went down? Uh, yeah. So Kristen goes, I'm going to tell your dad where, uh, where you're going with grandma. And my daughter refused. She would not tell me. And so Kristen turned around and said, oh, she's going to Florida with my mom. What am I supposed to, like, I, she's got full, full custody of her. Like, I didn't know if I had a say in it. Did you, um, did you understand that she was going to be moving yes. to Florida? Okay. Yeah. And you know, uh, I got mad. I didn't say anything because it was my daughter's birthday and I wasn't going to cause a scene right there. In front of everyone. At the birthday party, did Miss Williams explain to you why she was moving to Florida? Why Emma was moving to Florida? Because she couldn't take care of her. What do you remember what she said? I mean, did she say those words, I can't take care of her, or did she stand on? Kelly told me that she couldn't take care of her in a text message. Did Miss Williams say anything about why It'd Florida be... was? It'd be it'd be in the best interest for Emma to go to Florida to have a better education. Okay. Um, at that time, where did uh, where was Miss Williams living? Uh, at her friend's Abby's house. Okay. Um, had she been living exclusively at that friend Abby's house? She's been there for maybe a year or two. Okay. Um, was mother employed at that time? Do you know? Not that I know of. Has mother usually been consistently employed during the past couple of years? No. Did you ever tell Miss Williams <clears throat> that you did not want Emma to move to Florida? Uh, not face to face, but over text. Okay. Over phone calls. And did she respond to that? How did I don't she care what you say. Okay. Um, so then um, that birthday party was the last time that you saw Emma? Yes. And when do you believe that she actually moved to Florida? Sometime in October, like the, after her birthday, it was like that next Friday they left. And that's when you, uh, shortly thereafter is when you filed the motion for uh, show cause, correct? Uh, you've not been able to see Emma since then at no, all. Not personally. Okay. You are doing uh, FaceTime visits with her? Yes. And are those consistently happening? Mainly on the weekends because I work second shift from 3 p.m. to 1130 at night. So she's still at school when I go to work. And she's going, she's in bed when I get off work. I don't have time to stop and make a video call during work. But you do call on the week? Yes. Have you been calling every weekend? When I can, yes. Okay. Um, do you have any physical uh, ailments that would prevent you from providing any sort of care for huh? What? Are you sick or do you have any disabilities or, or anything that would 
mean that you're not physically able to care for him? No. No? Be fit to do that? Yes. Um, do you have any mental impairments that no. would prevent you? Okay. You said you're employed yep. with school as a custodian? Yep. And what is your hourly rate there? Uh, or your what are what? How much do you make? I mean, I don't want to say. Okay. And how long have you been working there? So I previously switched over to schools. I was like, I I've been at the schools for a year. I was at first working for. Well, they lost the contract for. So the in-house and I got hired and directly to public schools. Ah, so okay. I'm so, still there. So you've you've always been working in the school, yeah. you've just had different in Okay. But you've been consistently working. Yes. You are currently living with Miss Erin Dondo. Yes. And how long have you been living with her? Beginning of April. Okay. Prior to living with her, uh, where were you living? With my parents. Has there ever been a time where you've been homeless or unable no. to provide a roof over Emma's head? No. Are you still willing to care for Emma exclusively? If you were, I mean, you're asking for primary physical custody at this point. Is that still your request? Yes. Um, is there, has Miss Williams indicated anything since October about her ability to care for Emma? I mean, since, it, a cop, since October, like after October, no, but like before October, yes. Okay. Uh, explain that a little bit. So it was the whole thing about what Samantha said about the one o'clock in the morning thing about taking the pills. I jumped up, drove up there at 1 a.m., got back home at like three, after three o'clock in the morning from getting my daughter because she wanted to take pills because she couldn't handle her friend Abby yawn at Kristen, yawn at my daughter, and she just had enough of it and she wanted to take pills. And I wasn't going to let my daughter be there. Did you ever know, Miss Williams, whether when you were in a relationship with her or after that, did you ever know her to have suicidal ideations before? No. If she did, she never told me. Okay. Um, also, at the beginning of this, in her opening statement, Miss Williams stated that um, you did not, from January to June, is, do, do you know of any reason why she might be saying that? Like what she might be using something with? Or you have no idea. Okay. All right. I have, I don't have any other questions. Do you have anything else that you'd like to state to the court? Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Williams, do you have any questions for Mr. Hughes? No. Nope. Uh, I have a couple. Um, so, sir, an order was entered in 2018. I think that's the last order that governed parenting time or custody. And at that time, you were granted supervised parenting time. Do you recall why that was supervised? I don't remember. Um, and you were granted parenting time on Saturdays from noon until six. Um, well, that's four years ago. I mean, four and a half years ago. Have you exercised parenting time regularly over all of those years leading up to uh, the, the the current time frame that you're talking about? Last, last so, so when you granted me that, the first weekend I picked up Emma, Kristen goes, oh, you can keep Emma down there. I'm going to come down and get her. And when she came down, she pretty much moved in at my parents' house and lived there for a whole year. And she uh, on and off. All right. So the two of you cohabitated in some respect for a period of time after that? All right. So you never really did the supervised parenting time then if the two of you were oh. together. Because all three of you were together, right? Right. Well, all right. We weren't, so, we weren't uh, dating, but she no, was. I get it. Living. I get it. Um, so uh, if that took, if that happened right after that order was entered, uh, how long? How long did she live there then? She lived there for a year, and then she moved out, and then she came back and lived there for like another year and a half. No. Ma'am, I'll let you testify. Just be quiet. So if we're talking uh, four and a half years, for at least a couple of those years, 
you lived well, in. You weren't, you weren't you weren't together, but you were living in the same place. Yes. Okay. When did she uh, move out of that place for good? When she went to go live with her friend Abby. And when was that? I don't remember dates. All right. So when she did that, did you have visitation after that? Yes. What was your visitation after that? It was, it was like every other weekend I had her. Was it supervised or did you just have her on your own? Well, I was living at my parents' house, so yeah, you can call it supervised. Okay. I mean, you'd come and go. It's not like she was enforcing right, yeah. supervision requirement. Is that, or was she? No, she was. Krista never told me that someone had to be there with me. I always came and got her by myself, and she never had a problem with that. Okay. And uh, so you had weekends then for some period of time up until December of 2020, uh, 2021. Yes. Child's seven now, right? Yes. So what grade is she in? Second. Second grade? First. First. And where did she go to first grade? First grade was, I. Uh, it was supposed to start at C. But then she, she didn't go to school for like the first like two, three weeks. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then they turned around and got the file transferred. to. So she went to like part of the first grade year? Yes. And then she transferred to Cedar Springs in December nope. when you got her or January? So yeah, I think first grade is the grade that she's currently in. Yeah, first grade is the grade that she's currently in. She All went right. to she went to in young in a young uh, fives and in kindergarten. Fives, I want to say it was like part of the year. Kristen got mad, moved out, took Emma, and that was it. And then and then kindergarten, she came back to in end of December, first of January. All right, but she didn't go to school the first part of that year? I don't remember what happened there. Why Why we changed. Like, so when you got her in December of last year, not 2022, but 2021, did you have to transfer her from a school to Did you just sign her up for I just signed her up for So she had not been going to school the entire time? Probably. Uh, probably not. I don't know. I'm not asking questions I already know the answer to. I'm trying to find out what's going on. Kristen had her for that first semester. I had her for the second. Okay. Was she in school in that first semester? Sorry, I'm asking you. Oh, I, I don't know if she was. I just I, I just signed her up, and the school did everything else. So you're not sure if she was in school in the fall of 2020, 2021 or not? Yes. When you got her in December or January, you signed her up for Cedar Springs, and she finished out the school year there? Yes. Did she go to school every day? Yes. Did she do relatively well? Yes. That's when I was stopping in and seeing her during school. Okay. Um, and that was kindergarten then? Yes. Okay. And the, did they recommend that she move on to first grade? Yes. Okay. Even though she may have missed some or all of the first half of the year? Yes. She, she was doing really good in school. Okay. How was her behavior? Uh, for the first, you know, couple of weeks, it was bad. But when I started popping in there and seeing her and all that, then, you know, her attitude changed. Like, I didn't go on there every day, but, like, it was, like, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I stopped in there and I seen her until it was time for her to go to the bus. Okay. And her teacher was fine with that. I'm sorry. How was her behavior at home? At home, it was fine. You listen. Uh, explain her uh, medical condition to me, or what she require medication for. I made an allegation that you didn't give her medication that she requires. Explain that to me. I gave her her medicine as it said on the bottle. Okay. What does she have? What what condition does she require the medication for? She's got asthma. Okay. Is that it? Uh, yes. What medication is she prescribed for asthma? Uh, there's a pill. There's two inhalers and her her nasal. But one of the inhalers says take as needed, not every day. All right. So the pill is every day? Yes. 
you give it to her every day? Yes. One inhaler is every day? Yes. And you gave, it, gave her a puff every day? It, it, it's like two puffs in the morning, two puffs at night. And yeah, she got it. She got those? Okay. And the nasal was every day, every night. And she got that every day? Yes. Every night? Okay. And then the second inhaler, she only got that if she had a, a bad reaction to something? If she was coughing real hard or breathing real hard, she got it. Okay. All right. Because I was doing what the doctor told me, not what Kristen told me. Okay. Well, that's good. Any other condition uh, that she has that requires attention or medication? Not that I know of. I, Kristen doesn't tell me everything. You feel like you have a pretty good bond with your child? Yes. Explain that. What makes you say that? She always likes to come to see me. She's always happy when... You know, right now when I'm video chatting her, she likes being around me. What kind of fun stuff did you guys do when she was living with you for those uh, six or seven months? When I was at my parents' house, we played outside. When I had my parents' quad running, we went for rides on that. When I was living with, started living with Sam, we went to the trampoline park. We go for trips. We go to the lake. Uh, she yell and scream, splash around, have a good time when she's with you, doing stuff like that? Yeah. She's not all uh, withdrawn or hesitant about being with you or anything like that? No. So you said she does well in school. She, she, she old enough to have, probably didn't have any homework last year that you had to really do with her, or did she? It was just like reading. You read to her? Or, huh? You read to her or read with her? Yes. Yeah, okay. Reading and, you know, learning her, you know, ABCs and, you know, counting and all that. Do you have a, a meal schedule? Are you kind of on your own for food or what? I would make her food. You made her food? Did you make her breakfast? There you go. Uh, did she get school lunch or did you make a lunch for her every day? She had school lunch. Okay. How about dinner? Well, when I was living at my mom's house, it was whatever my mom made for dinner. Or if she didn't make anything, it's chicken nuggets or pizza rolls or right. ramen noodles. What about in your house? Well, you were gone because you were working the second shift, right? Right. So it's whatever Sam made them for dinner. Other than her asthma, did she have any health issues when she was in your care that required no. attention? No? Okay. She got plenty of clothes, uh, toys, uh, stuff yes. she needs. Yep. Toothbrush, hairbrush, all that kind of stuff? Yes. What was your understanding of why Kristen asked her to live with you in December of 2021. Just figure it's too much for her to handle. That's what she told you? Word for word? or No, like that? that's not what she told me, but that's what I kind of figured because why else would she ask me to have Emma? Yeah, what'd she tell you? I don't exactly remember. Okay. Uh, you got any kind of criminal record? No. You ever been investigated for child abuse or neglect? No. Do you know if uh, the child would like to live with you? I'm sure she would like to. Has she said that in so many words, or are you just um, assuming? She's, she's happy when she's with me. Why wouldn't she want to not live with me? Uh, when the child was with you for those uh, six months or so at the beginning of last year, did you make sure that she could uh, have contact with her mom, talk to her mom, see her mom? Yes. How so? Video chat. Anytime Kristen wanted to video chat, she pretty much video chatted unless I was working. She had parenting time on Mother's Day. Did she have any other parenting time? When she came, when she came and got her, so that was like every other weekend. So you, you never said no. You, she came. No, I never her. told her no. She couldn't come get her. When she fell for custody, then I was seeing her. I wasn't really going to complain about it. Any domestic violence between you and uh, Kristen Williams? No. All right, Mr. Gould. Anything else for your client? No, thank you. All right. And Ms. Williams, any questions for Mr. Hughes after that? No. No. All right. Uh, Mr. Gould, anything else you wanted to present? No, we have no further witnesses. All right. Uh, Ms. Williams, did you want to testify? Yeah, because everything he said was not true. All right. Raise your right hand then. Do you swear or affirm any testimony you give in this cause to be the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth, self you got? Yes. All right. Go ahead and tell me what you want me to know. So to start with, um, the last time he saw her was not the first weekend of October. It was two weekends prior to that because her birthday was September 22nd. 
And they, he literally was at her birthday party for less than an hour, barely talked to her at all. Like that doesn't show me somebody who wants to be a part of her life. Um, the, before, before my mom invited him to that, I hadn't heard from him for, for, for like three months. I hadn't heard from him since July. When they dropped her back off in July, that is the last time me or my mother heard from him. Um, and as far as her medication goes, she takes a singular pill. She has an inhaler, a steroid inhaler that she takes two puffs four times a day. I mean, two puffs twice a day. So morning, two puffs in the morning, two puffs at night. Um, she has a nose spray that she gets daily. She has an albuterol as needed, which that one is an as needed thing. And she also takes a liquid Claritin every single day, which I've sent him medicine every single time she goes, her medicine goes with her. And I have picture proof of him not giving it to her because I got to the point where I counted every single pill that came out of that bottle. Or I took a picture before she left. I took a picture of the medicine before she left. And then I counted it and took a picture of it. But when she came back, because she comes back and she does nothing but cough and cough and cough. And when I send her, she doesn't do that. When I was sending her, she didn't cough when she, before she went to him. And then all of a sudden she was really bad when she got home. So that's when I decided to start recording the medicine before she went and when she got home. Anything else? And she has been going to school. She went to school with me. She went, she started at like the beginning of the school year before she went with my mother. So she didn't miss three weeks of school. She literally started first grade the very, the day that the public school started school, she started first grade. And she has told me and my mom both Emma has told us no, both hearsay, that she, your honor. So how is it hearsay? I'm talking about the child that we're talking about. She's not a she's not a party to the case. She's certainly an interested party, but the two of you are the parties to the case. So things that you say okay, to so, but each you other asked... are not hearsay. But uh and, and you know, just so I'm being fully transparent here, ma'am. You you are uh like like I said before, third parties, which include grandparents and other family members don't have necessarily custodial rights to children in Michigan. Grandparents can get visitation rights, but um, the Michigan law doesn't, uh, doesn't really allow the court to grant custody to third parties, including grandparents, unless certain criteria are met. But that criteria is pretty extraordinary. You would have to make a, the parents would have to actually have to be unwilling or incapable of caring for the child. If that was not necessarily the case, the court would have to find that the parents were unfit to care for the child before the court could actually grant a third party or a grandparent custody in Michigan. So that's a, kind of an uphill battle you're fighting right there. You would have, uh, you know, for whatever reason, I think you've determined yourself to be incapable of caring for the child by sending her off with somebody else. So but I, I have guess. taken care of this child. I okay, but, but have you're not taken right care now, of this child. But you're not right now. And um, so I, I guess what I would need to hear from you would be some kind of evidence where I could make a determination that Mr. Hughes is unfit. Otherwise, I really have no choice but to grant him custody. The uh, fact that he doesn't give her her medicine is, is not a factor to you guys? Well, he testified that he does. It is and a I have picture proof that he doesn't. I, I don't see any pictures right here. I don't have any any pictures in front of me. That's because I don't I, know how to send them to you guys. You might have that, but I, I don't know. I mean, and you could manipulate the bottles. I'm not saying you did, but it's it's somewhat suspect. I didn't uh, manipulate any bottles. I literally counted the pills okay, but from the time you left. But it basically comes down to your word against his is what I'm saying. And other than that, I mean, he's testified that he's got a good relationship with the child. They do fun stuff together. They don't he have a good relationship. Made sure that she got to school every day and she did well in school when she was in his care at the end of last school year. 
the, so the threatening a boy with a pair of scissors is having a good stable thing at school. He threatened somebody with a pair of scissors. She did. Okay. Was it addressed? He yelled at her about it. He didn't talk to her about it. Were you there? Yeah. You saw it? Because I asked her, because she came home, because that was the day, it was one of the weekends that I picked her up from him. And she's like, Mom, I had a bad day at school today. And I was like, why? What would you do, Emma? And she goes, well, I threatened to stab a boy. I threatened to stab a boy with a pair of scissors. And Jacob was like, the, the hearsay objection, Your Honor, still stands. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I don't think it's really trying to prove the truth of the matter asserted. She's okay. It certainly is is what the child said, but you know, and I don't. I mean, kids do things as long as it was addressed by a, a parent or the parents. I mean, that's that's what the that's what you're supposed to do. Is if your child does something wrong, you you address it. Um. I, I guess it, it all begs the question, man. Why isn't the child with you? You've got custody. Why do you keep sending her off to live with other people? You sent her off for six months to live with dad. Now you've sent her off for the better part of a school year to live with your mom. Why is that? Why can't you take care of her? Because I was having medical issues myself that I need to take care of myself so I can be alive for my children. Do you all want me to die so that my children don't have a mom? I didn't say that. I simply asked why the child wasn't living with you. And you've told me now. I didn't make any insinuation that I wanted anything to happen to you. Simply asking questions. Because I have medical problems that I needed to get figured out. And I'm getting them fixed. I have surgery in two days for them. Wait, what is today? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. In four days, my bad. And I don't want my children to watch me have to go through this hard, hard situation because guess what? It takes a lot to fight a medical condition. All right. If, so you sent the child to live with Mr. Hughes last school year. Why didn't you have him simply live with, the, with Mr. Hughes this school year? Because he manipulates my child to where she tells me she hates me. She has told me time after time she hates me and it comes from her dad. That's not okay. I've never told her to ever hate her dad. When she calls him by his name, I correct her and tell her, no, that's your dad. All right. Mr. Uh, Gold, any questions for Ms. Wing? Uh, just, a few, just a few, Your Honor. Uh, Ma'am, you, you mentioned that uh, medical issues are why you sent Emma to live with your mother in Florida. Can you ex can you explain what those medical issues are? I'm not. That's my own personal p issues. I'm not telling you all my medical conditions. No. Can you tell us what surgery you have scheduled in four days? That's my personal business that nobody needs to know but me and my doctors. So one of the best interest factors that the referee is going to analyze um when determining if Jacob should have custody or if you should have custody is the medical conditions that both of you have and whether those would impact your ability to uh, parent Emma and it sounds like you're testifying that your medical conditions do impact your ability to parent Emma effectively is that correct no so the medical conditions aren't severe enough to send Emma away to Florida I sent Emma to Florida because at this point she needed an attitude adjustment because her dad makes her hate me and I'm not doing it. I shouldn't have to be hated by a child that I do everything for. I do everything for this child. So you sent her to Florida because of an attitude adjustment, not because of your medical condition. You are twisting my words. I'm, I'm not answering any more of your questions. The... You did testify that you uh, um, heard the heard the discussion about Emma threatening a boy with scissors, correct? Ma'am. Your Honor, can you 
help me out. Yeah, I'll, direct, I'll direct you to answer the questions. If you fail to do so, I guess that's up to you, but it's not going to weigh in your favor and I would make a decision in this matter. He's twisting all of my words. So what's the point of, of answering him? Because we're making a record here. If you want your opinion considered, offering your testimony is, is how you do that. So, oh, ma'am, um, again, I'm asking about the incident where Emma threatened the boy with scissors that you had testified to earlier, correct? Remember that? Yep. And you, is it true that you testified that it was on one of the weekends that you picked her up from Jacobs? Yep. So he did, so Jacob did have Emma from, uh, for a period of time between January and June. He did not have her from January until June. No, he did not have her for that whole period of time. No, he did have he her did for not. a chunk of time, then, uh, uh, an extended period of time that allowed you to have weekend visitations. Correct? Yeah, but it was not from June, from January till June. I don't know where they're getting this information. Okay. And um, is it true, Jacob had testified earlier that after the 2018 order was entered, that you uh, moved into his parents' house for a period of time. Is that true? Not as long as he's saying, but yes, I did move in with his mom and his dad. And then he also testified that you'd moved out and then you moved back into their house a, a second. Is that also true? Nope. Okay. Where are you currently living now? Uh, still at the same place I was when he dropped Emma Lou off. That would be your friend Abby's house? That's my house, yes. I get mail there. Uh, you say that's your house. Do you own it? Neither of us own the house. We pay rent. Okay. How much do you pay in rent? I pay $550 a month plus my utilities. Okay. And you are employed now? Sure, I am. Where are you employed at? And uh, how many hours do you work there? Let's see. This last week, I put in the, the last two weeks, I put in 93.25 hours. A lot of hours. So, do you work? Uh, I think you said at the beginning of this hearing you work third shift. Um, I just recently moved to third shift, but I'm going to be moving back to my original second shift you currently work third shift yes okay and um who would be babysitting emma while you're at work or do I you have, plan on leaving her in florida i have friends and family that will, are more than willing to take care of my child who have been a part of her life a lot longer than her dad even has okay so it's not your intention to leave her in Florida? I mean, I, I want her to stay there to finish school. Yes, that is what I want. It's for All right, her I have no further questions then, Your Honor. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, Ma'am, anything else you want to say? Can we talk to my mother who's been taking care of her for the last five months? You can call her as a witness if you wish. Sure. All right. Um, Ms. Ryan, you need to unmute. Unmute. Yes, right. sir. Raise your right hand. You swear or affirm any testimony you give in this cause to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Absolutely, yes. All right, Ms. Williams, you can ask her any questions you have at this time. Can I refer to her as my mom? Because that's what she is to me. Fine with me. Okay. Um, let's see. Has Emma's attitude been a lot better since she's been in Florida with you? It has. Has she been doing good in school? She is improving. Does she see a counselor because she has a lot of trauma from her life? She just started seeing a counselor at school this this week. Has she told you that she doesn't want to go flip with her dad? No, Your Honor, you're saying. No, yeah, you're saying uh, statement. So I would 
Alex has stayed out of it. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Am, am I allowed? Am no, I, Your Honor, am I allowed to answer that question or no? No. Anyway, you could go inside. The wind is creating a lot of uh, interference. I, I really can't. I'm I'm at work and we're at a park right now, so right. I'll try to go somewhere better. All right. But go ahead. I I can still talk and walk and. Before, let's put it this way, before the court hearing for my show cause, how many times did Jacob communicate with Emma? Um, maybe called her three times before the court was brought into the whole situation. How many times do I talk to Emma? Uh, almost every day. I don't even know what else to ask because I'm so like if anyone else would like to question me it's fine <laughs> all right Mr. Gould any questions sure um ma'am uh, you're living yes. in Florida now but you lived in do you still have a house in Michigan or did you live in Michigan at some point uh, yeah, we still have a house there. Okay, and so why are you living in Florida and not in Michigan right now? Um, I'm a snowbird. I come down here for the winters and come up there for the summers. Okay, so you still have your house in Michigan? Absolutely. And um, is there a reason that Kristen can't live at that house? Uh, nobody's living at that house. We shut it down. Gotcha. There's no okay. heat, no water. You know, we closed it all down. Sure. When... Um, would you? How did it come about that Emma was going to live with you down in Florida? Or I guess my question is when you were discussing that, was there ever an idea that you would stay in Michigan so that Emma could stay in Michigan? Maybe Emma I, would live with you, but it would be in Michigan. I have a job down here that I had to come down to. Okay. I work here and I work there. So you no, had no... There was no, uh, you, you had to move to Florida for your job. Well, it's not a have to, it was, it was a choice, but sure. I have employment in both places. Okay, that's fine. Um, so it was, it was for work. I come down here for work. Right. But I, I just wondered if there had been any discussion about you staying in Michigan with Emma with you versus going to Florida. But there, were, there wasn't too much of a choice because of your employment. Absolutely, right. Okay. Um, and then uh, I know Miss Williams doesn't want to testify, but do you know what her medical issues are as to why Emma, uh, why she couldn't take care of Emma during the school year? I have no further questions. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Ma'am, do you have any legal documents uh, that uh, substantiate the child being in your care? Um, Kristen filled out a power of attorney paper and we had that no notarized. Okay. And that paper was good for like six months. All right. And that was sufficient for uh, enrolling the child in school? Absolutely. It was school. It was medical. It was everything except name change and marriage, I believe. Okay. Did the school ask if, uh, if the child had another parent who had rights? Um, I can't recall. I do know I, I gave them that, that paper when I enrolled her in school down here. They didn't ask about dad though, so does she have a dad? Or? No. Do you have, does he agree? No. There's only one signature on the power of attorney, I'm assuming. Uh, no, his signature wasn't on the power of attorney because Kristen had sole custody. So, you know, we, I don't know, I guess misunderstanding on our part on how it all works. <laughs> yeah. That's well, created quite a situation. Um, yeah. It's created kind of a bad situation because, I, you know, I'm faced but, with um, having to decide custody between two parents. Unless, like I said, I can find that they're both unwilling or incapable of caring for the child or unfit. And uh, 
it appears that uh, Ms. Williams might be incapable of caring for the child at the at this immediate point. No, um, I've never been incapable finding, of taking care of my child. Well, you sent her off to live with somebody else two straight years now. So that shows some incapability of caring for her for whatever reason. But I'm finding that Mr. Uh, Mr. Hughes is not unwilling to care for her. He doesn't appear to be incapable of caring for her. In fact, he did for maybe not six months at the beginning of last year, but for uh, some substantial period of time. And he's not unfit. So I really can't decide third, par third party custody at this point. The law doesn't allow me to. His, so, Your Honor, can, may I speak? His mother took care of Emma 90% of the time. Your Honor, if she's going to testify to that, I'd ask for a foundation. If it yeah, you need some foundation for that uh, or some evidence to back it up. I mean, you're, you're probably talking about something you heard from another person. You didn't live in the house with them, so you don't know that for a fact. I, well, if you he, stated to, him, he stated himself that he worked from 3.30 in the afternoon until 11 at night. Well, that's when Emma was home. Okay. It doesn't mean he's unfit. He's I never said he was people. unfit. I and she never. also wasn't in school at that point. So he was home with her during the day. And yes, she provides, was. How was she not in school? He provides other capable care for the child. That's no different than Ms. Williams. She said that she worked third shift, but she had other people that uh, that could watch the child if she needed Because my child that's would be sleeping. That's what you do when you work. When I go to work, my child would be sleeping. Okay. Ms. Williams, any other witnesses you wanted to present? Not at this moment, but I want to say right now that so. clearly he, like, you guys aren't taking into the consideration that she, when she went down there, he didn't contact her for only four times. I literally call my daughter almost every single day. There might be a day here and there that I don't contact her because I'm tired because I work all the time but I still make an effort to call my daughter. And even when I, like, on most days I talk to her four or five times a day, I still make an effort to talk to my child every single day. It sounds more and more like it's more work and the attitude adjustment than any medical condition that led to the child living with your mother though. No, it's not. Well, okay. Mr. Gold, anything else you want to present? No, thank you. <laughs> Any closing <laughs> arguments? Um, your Honor, I, I think it's clear that um, in this instance, for whatever reason, whether it's medical, whether it's work, um, whether it's an attitude adjustment or for whatever reason, mother is not capable of caring for the child at this time. She also wasn't able to care for the child at the beginning of 2022. Dad was able to step up at that time, took care of her. He made sure that schooling was taken care of. He made sure that the medical was taken care of. Um, and he's simply asking that if mom is not able to care for the child, custody revert to him so that he can, he's um, happy to um, abide by any parenting time schedule. I think mother should have um, visits. I don't know that they need to be supervised at this point. Um, but I, I would say the, the standard schedule, uh, alternating weekends, Emma needs to come back to Michigan so she can see both of her parents and she can thrive in what she's already familiar with. Um, she can live at the home uh, with, with father and his girlfriend, she, who she's also familiar with. There's no uh, indication on the record or there's no substantial evidence that would show that he has been unfit to care for her during those time periods. Um, she argues that she calls her child every day and dad does not. She's the one that sent the child to Florida because she's not able to take care of him or take care of Emma. Dad is able to take care of her. Um, but dad doesn't call oh. her. Dad doesn't make an effort to even see her. We would ask. I'll give you a, I'll none give, of you I'll understand. Give, I'll give you a chance to make your closing argument. Just be quiet for a minute. As, as far as the um, uh, contempt uh, show cause, um, Your Honor, I, we're not looking for any substantial uh, like fine or anything like that. Um, I think the matter was we wanted Emma returned to Michigan so that father can continue to have to see her in some capacity. So uh, like I said, no fine, but um, 
mind if on the record she was found in contempt for violating the order. But our our end goal is a change in custody. Ms. Williams, any closing arguments you want to make? None of you, like, I don't know why none of you see that he had, he, before she even went to Florida, he didn't see her for three months. And now all of a sudden, because she went to Florida, now he wants to play dad again. Like, how is that fair to this child? You're going to make her come home and be what? Sad, depressed, angry? because she has to come home. She's thriving in the school. She's doing what she needs to do. And now all of a sudden we're gonna rip her yet again from another school. Because I hate to say it, this child should not be in first grade. There's no way she should be in first grade because I don't know how they passed her from kindergarten. Anything else? No. All right. I'm going to take some time here and uh, review my notes. And uh, I'll, uh, I'm not going to turn off the Zoom, but uh, I'll stop the, the live stream and go off the record at this. All right. Uh, we're back on the record. Mr. Gould, on behalf of this client, filed a motion regarding uh, custody, parenting time, and support. Uh, also, a show cause was filed. The, uh, the law is somewhat unclear, I guess, on the necessity for uh, for his permission to change uh, the domicile of the child um, when one parent has sole legal custody. That's certainly true that uh, permission is not required to move more than 100 miles in Michigan, which normally uh, it is required if one party uh, wants to change the child's legal residence with joint legal custody. Um, case law is a little bit less clear on whether that same permission is needed or not to move the domicile out of state. Um, and uh, I guess ba based on what I'm about to order as far as custody is concerned, I don't know that the determination on the show cause is absolutely necessary. So uh, I'm going to dismiss the show cause. Um, as far as custody goes, um, the, the way a custody motion uh, works uh, is that the motion is filed, court has to make an initial, initial determination on whether there's a change in circumstances or proper cause to consider the motion. And uh, the judge uh, heard at least some initial um, statements on December 12th regarding the motion and uh, in setting it for further proceedings, I assume that she was of the opinion that there was a change in circumstances or proper cause to consider the motion. Whether that was uh, specifically articulated or not, um, I don't know, but uh, at this point, I will make a, a finding that there is proper cause to consider the motion uh, because the child's not living with either parent at this time. Um, so that then uh, shifts the, uh, the, the shifts the focus to um, whether there's an established custodial environment with either parent and uh, be determined at this time that uh, there really isn't. The child uh, has lived here and there um, for, it sounds like, a lot of her life. She lived uh, up until 2018, um, or 2016, the case was filed, um, and uh, there, there was an order entered as we've gone over uh, through testimony uh, in 2017, and then in 2018, granting uh, custody and, and parenting time, and, but then the, the parties resided together under some arrangement, uh, for the better part of a couple of years over the next three from 2018 to uh, 2021, give or take. Then uh, it sounds like mom moved out of uh, the, the dad's house or the dad, uh, his house with his parents and uh, lived on her own for some period of time. But then the child went back and lived with, uh, with dad from uh, sometime around a year ago until around the end of the school year. Dates are somewhat foggy because the parties are not in agreement on those dates, but um, for some period of time anyway. And then the child went back with mom, it sounds like for the summer, maybe a, a few weeks at the beginning of the school year. But then the, the child's with the grandmother and really a uh, custodial environment has to be established over time. And uh, the child hasn't had a significant length of time 
uh, with anybody really to uh, establish a custodial environment at this point. I guess I will state that probably the most stability that she's had, uh, were the, it sounds like, were those six months or so with, uh, with Mr. Hughes um, <laughs> over the last few years. So uh, um, as far as the two parents are concerned. Um, I'm not sure about the situation with grandma right now. Maybe it may be just fine. Uh, however, as I've indicated, um, this is not decided between a third party and a parent. This is decided between the parents. And I don't even get to the point where I can consider third parties for custody, as I've stated, unless either parent is, de is determined to be incapable of or unwilling to raise a child or both parents are considered to be unfit. And uh, I'm not making that finding at this time. So uh, at this point, uh, the child custody factors would be analyzed uh, by preponderance of evidence. The, uh, the testimony, and uh, Ms. Williams was given ample opportunity to present any testimony she wanted. Uh, her testimony didn't necessarily uh, consist of a lot of things that could be plugged into the 12 child custody factors. Uh, Mr. Hughes did. So uh, the first factor, uh, comes down to essentially a bond between the parent and the child, uh, whether uh, who the child's bonded with, who the child goes to with problems, uh, does a parent relate to a child, things like that. Uh, specifically, the law says the love, affection, and other emotional ties existing between the parties involved and the child. And uh, Mr. Hughes testified about his relationship with the child, the fact that they um, put things together, they go to... Uh, they play outside, they ride the quad, they go to the trampoline park, they go on trips together, they go to the lake, he reads books to her, he prepares cereal and, and the school lunch, or the lunches at school, but dinner's prepared for her. And uh, I would find him in favor on that factor. The second is the capacity and disposition of the parties involved to give a child love, affection, and guidance, and continue uh, raising the child in the child's religion, um, and, and to continue educating the child. It appears that. I, I don't know where the child really went to school from uh, for the fall of 21 or the fall of 22 up until she moved in with her grandmother. But uh, it sounds like he provided uh, schooling for the child for the um, for the second semester anyway of the last school year uh, when the child was residing with him. It sounds like there was some issue with the threat. It sounds like that was dealt with. Um, he, he, noted some behavior issues. So he made himself a presence in the child's school. He said that improved things. He said at home, she was just fine. And uh, for those reasons, I would find him in favor on factor two. Uh, factor three is the capacity and disposition of the parties to provide the child with food, clothing, medical care, and other care recognized under the laws of the state. Mr. Hughes testified that the child has food and clothing in his care. And uh, those uh, necessities aren't in question. And I would find him in favor on, on, on that factor. The next factor is the length of time the child has lived in a stable, satisfactory environment. Um, you know, as I've indicated, uh, the child appears to have moved around a fair amount. And, uh, and hopefully uh, that, that's not, not going to become a problem uh, as time goes on or in the future. Uh, it sounds like dad was really ready, willing, and able a year ago to provide care for the child on an extended basis. It sounds like like it doesn't sound like the mom, uh, Ms. Williams, is really capable of raising the child on a on a consistent basis. Um, child was uh, with both of them, then with mom for a short period of time, then with dad for four or five, six months, and then with mom for the summer, and now with grandma for what was presumed was going to be the school year. So it doesn't sound like Ms. Williams really has the uh, either the capability or the interest to uh, provide long term care for. For this child and I find in favor of the father on that factor. Uh, fifth factor is the permanence of a family unit in, uh, in either home. Um, sounds like um, Ms. Williams lives with a friend and Mr. Hughes lives with his girlfriend. Um, so that factor is not really relevant, I guess. Uh, the moral fitness of the parties involved, I didn't hear anything that would cause me to believe that either of them were immoral or that they had uh, a uh, criminal record or abuse neglect record that would affect their ability to uh, parents. So I wouldn't consider that factor. Mental and physical health of the parties involved. Um, I've heard three different reasons why Ms. Williams was not able to raise the child 
on a steady and consistent basis. I heard she works too much, that uh, the child needed an attitude adjustment, and that she had health issues. Um, so that would certainly impact that factor. Um, and, uh, and and really her mental health, I guess. I, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure what's going on there. Um, her behavior on the record was, was a little bit uh, out of the ordinary. And uh, her, her testimony or statements uh, consisted mostly of, of yelling and not really uh, just calmly and coolly presenting evidence. And uh, so I'm not really 100% sure what's going on there, but uh, certainly it, it appears that, um, that there might be uh, some issues going on. And I would find in favor of Mr. Hughes on that factor. Child's homeschool and community record. Uh, I, I didn't hear a whole lot about the home school or community record from Ms. Williams. Mr. Hughes, however, testified that the child did well in school when, when with him. She was recommended to go be passed on to the next to the next grade. Um, I don't. Uh, it would, I guess it would have been nice to see some attendance records for that period of time to, to establish the really the exact date she was in his care. I didn't have that to consider, but. Um, I guess she was in kindergarten then and she's in first grade now. So it uh, must have been a recommendation that she move on. So I'd find it in favor of Mr. Uh, Hughes on that factor. Next factor is a child's preference. And I don't know what the child would tell me. She might say she wants to live with grandma. She might say mom, she might say dad. Um, really, it's, it's not gonna be relevant at this point. Uh, and I don't like to say that because I think uh, kids should have a chance to have some input in these things, even though it's not usually enough to uh, overcome uh, substantial uh, amounts of evidence to the contrary. Um, but uh, I guess I'm assuming that the only real options here are between um, Ms. Ratton and Mr. Hughes and that Ms. Williams' house isn't really an option. So, um, you know, that, that for the reasons I've stated regarding third-party custody, I, I guess the, the child's uh, preference or, or in-camera child interview isn't really necessary. So. Uh, that's not going to be considered at this point. Uh, the next factor is, uh, it's a long one, but it comes down to the ability of the parents to co-parent. And uh, it sounds like when left to their own devices, they, they co-parent okay. I mean, mom was having an issue. She needed to lean on dad for a place to live for a while. And he moved her in. This is the parent's house, but he moved her in uh, for a couple different periods of time, it sounds like. And then mom needed help with the child at the beginning of last year. And Dad stepped up and he took the child under his wing and, and, and provided care for her for the rest of the school year. And then when mom wanted her back, he gave her back. And uh, they, they saw the child for whatever periods of time in the meantime. And the child was with the other parents. So I, it sounds like they can co-parent when, when they have uh, specific operating instructions maybe. But um, then this issue with the child being sent off to, to Florida through a monkey wrench and things. And, and uh, so I'll find the parties equal on that factor. Uh, the next factor was domestic violence. Uh, it didn't appear there was, there was none testified to anyway, so uh, that factor wouldn't be considered. Any other factor that the court feels is relevant, uh, certainly the child being moved off to live in, in Florida is relevant with a third party over the objection of the, uh, of the parent who, uh, uh, is, who was the father. He, has not agreed to that. He's not been found to be unfit, so his opinion has to be considered, and an order can't be entered uh, contrary to that opinion unless the court were to make that unfitness finding over his objection. And I've said three times now, I think, I'm not making that finding. So at this point, Mr. Uh, Hughes would be granted sole physical custody of the child. The parties would be granted joint legal custody of the child. The child would be returned back to Michigan and uh, in Mr. Uh, Hughes' care. Ms. Uh, Williams, to the extent she's able, will be uh, afforded reasonable parenting time pursuant to front of the court reasonable parenting time policy. And uh, I need some more information to uh, determine a child support obligation here. Sir, you said you made mean what per hour? Like, I want to say. All right, you work 40 hours a week? Yes. Do you have any other minor children besides this child? Yes, I have a son that lives in the UP. How old is he? Seven. All right. Mom has reasonable parenting time. You'd have 263 overnight. She would have 102. Who's typically claimed this child uh, at, for a dependent on tax at tax time? I have, but I've always given Kristen most of that money for having me claim her. No, you do not. Don't even lie. I'm not. Oh. 
if an order doesn't determine it, then it would it would be the party who has the child the majority of the time would be the party who would claim the child. So I'm gonna put that in dad's column. He had the child for six months of last year. No, my mom should claim her. Going forward. No, my mom should claim her. No, your mom's not going to claim her. Mr. Hughes is going to claim her. He's the parent. He had the child for the first five, six months of the year. No, he didn't. And you oh had the child God. for some period of time. Listen. Your Honor, can I say something just no, real quick? No, my phone's no, going to die. I, I just need real quick. Just my phone's about to die. Um, is there any way we can wait till the end of the school year to send her back to Michigan so she doesn't have to change schools again? No, nope, she shouldn't have been. It shouldn't have been changed down there in the first place. I guess if Mr. Hughes agrees to that, that's fine. But I'm getting the idea that he doesn't. So that's he better I'm, figure uh, out a way to bring her home. Uh, Ma'am, how much do you make uh, in your in your position at your work? Where do you work? How many hours a week? Between thirty-two and forty. You have minor children. How many minor children do you have in addition to this child? Three. Three total or three more? Three more. And do you claim uh, those children for tax purposes? We split years between my younger two and then my son's dad claims him. And sir, do you claim uh, your son or not? No, uh, his mom does. He doesn't even see his son. Either of you have health insurance uh, on the child? He has Medicaid. Florida Medicaid at the moment. You uh, child support real quick. All right, utilizing the incomes provided in the overnights, uh, effective January 1st, Ms. Uh, Williams would be ordered to pay 213 a month support, 15 ordinary medical, total of 228 per month. And Mr. Uh, Hughes' support would be uh, set to, to zero, obviously, at that time. He'd be the recipient of support. Um, child's be turned over to Mr. Hughes within seven days. Anything he's going to have to. He's going to have to find a way to come get her, Your Honor. We, my husband and I, both work full time. I've got no way to bring her back. Are they? Are you able to meet halfway? It would depend on the time. I've got, you know, I get like three days off, and then I go back to another job. A weekend. Uh, my client's available to drive on the weekend. My weekends are when I work. I work for a food vendor. We work at art festivals. Your husband as well? I guess we can try to figure something out. Like I said, my my battery is really going to die. You guys are probably going to lose me any second. But go ahead, Your Honor. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I just don't have well, a way to bring her totally back to Michigan. I get that. I mean, a situation has been created here against Mr. Hughes' interest and uh, to require him to drop everything to travel to Florida to pick up a child that shouldn't have been there in the first place. Uh, he did not for this long. Um, he addressed this right off the bat. He filed his first paperwork back in the beginning of November, as soon as this whole deal went down. He should have been the one who was asked. But he didn't contact court. his daughter. He may have contacted the courts, but at that time, he was not in contact with his yeah. daughter. Okay. But well, regardless, I'm sorry. Yeah. You. Um, so whatever is easiest on him, uh, you know, Mr. Hughes, what's the quickest you can uh, maybe meet halfway to pick the child up or, or go get the child? meet halfway tomorrow i can't do it tomorrow it's gotta be a weekend because i work monday through friday well i'm at work right now until monday i mean i can talk to my boss and see if i can take a couple of days off to drive halfway down there but that's me losing money uh, Ms. Williams, what about you? I mean, you're kind of responsible for creating this whole situation. What uh, can you do to help get the child back sooner rather than later? I have no way to go get her. My car's not going to make it to Florida. There's no way. Your Honor, I, we were brainstorming. Maybe um, my client is willing fly, to fly down to she, Florida and pick up Emma and bring back, but there's the cost of the plane ticket. Is the She's not flying to, from Florida back home by herself. No. Yeah. Right, we, I suggest down there. Well, I can't, I can't upfront money for him to fly to Florida because I don't even. I pay three hundred and twenty-five dollars in child support on my son, and now you want me to pay him two hundred and fifteen dollars a month? Like that leaves me with nothing to support my other children at all. Mm -hmm. But nobody cares that. Oh. All right, so Mr. Hughes is going to fly down and get the child. Ms. Uh, Ratton, he'll let you know when he's going to be there and what time to uh, have the child available for him. Ms. Williams will repay the amount 
uh, that it costs for those flights within six months. I don't think she should have to pay it all. No, I'm not. Okay. Well, if a contempt uh, proceeding is filed as a result of that, then we'll have a hearing on that. But at this point, that would be the order. Is there anything further for today? Um, just to be clear, Your Honor, that the, when you said that dad can claim Emma on the 2022 taxes, is that going to be written in the order? Yes. And um, I'm not terribly familiar with the Nuevo schedule. When would mother's first weekend visit be? It'd be this weekend. So more than likely two weeks from now, every other weekend. All right. I don't have any other questions. Thank you. All right. We're all set then. You get orders in the mail within a couple of days.